Okay, and welcome back to a very warm Citizen channel today. You can probably, I don't know when you're watching this or when it's going out, but uh, yeah, in the middle of that silly heat wave we had at, uh, in July. So, uh, yes, a bit hot. So, if I start sweating, it's not because of the excitement of this feature today. You need hands, although it's quite exciting in itself. It was certainly a great day. I remember I was there at this one. I certainly enjoyed it, and it was certainly an interesting watch. So, we're going to do a you need hands feature today for Niall Quinn. Yes, I did a, a hat trick here all from. Uh, a few weeks ago, recorded it. This is a You Need Hands feature. Of course, this is all about goalkeepers and subkeepers, of course. Not that long ago, subkeepers were unheard of at all clubs. But I say not that long ago, for old guys like me, obviously for younger ones, you won't even know. But at some stage, yeah, throughout history, you had to stick a striker in. A striker's had to go into, there's no substitute goalkeepers. Goalkeepers get sent off, goalkeepers get injured, of course you do. So these keep the what well, this feature looks at these guys who take on keeping responsibilities for a certain length of time, sometimes a long time, sometimes not very long. And we've got some city standing keepers. Uh, and today, yeah, I mean, even even now, if you look at modern times, our most recent was, uh, of course, Kyle Walker having to go in goal and uh, Atlanta after an injury to Edison and a, a silly sending off for Bravo, wasn't it? So it does happen. It still happens. And it's quite interesting. I'm sure there'll be one on Walker one day. And I've personally witnessed quite a few of these over time. I uh, recently did a Mike Doyle one who went in goal against Leicester City many, many moons ago. Well, this, we go back to the 20th of April, 1991, and this is a game, home game with Derby County uh, in the, uh, what we're in, in the uh, first, certainly Barker's League Division 1. That's it, Barker's League Division 1. And, of course, uh, this planned, news of a planned 18-team Super League had just recently been announced, uh, much to the consternation around the English League, a split between the FA and the Football League was imminent and happening. It's never quite been filled in, hasn't it, in all, in all respects. And it was, of course, the Barclays League Division 1. City had Peter Reid at the helm uh, and sat comfortable. Yeah, dude, OK, six to the table. And Visitors Derby, yeah, managed by Arthur Cox at the time, were already relegated. Well, not mathematically, but as good as. They were sat what bottom, 13 points from safety with only five games left. So this was it. They didn't get anything from us. They were definitely down. So we were doing well, unbeaten our last five games, home and away. And we came into this, as you'd expect, firm favourites. There's only one way City seems to be going at the time, and that was uh, up and up. Uh, Tony Colton, though, would do his best to give Derby a chance. He, had, he did have some brain farts, didn't he? Let's be honest about it. And, but we, uh, Derby hadn't counted, or City hadn't counted, or even the fans hadn't counted on the fact of Niall Quinn taking over in goal. It was a big, big surprise for all the Blues there. Ireland's number one. That's what we sung. Ireland's number one. Or are you coating in disguise? Well, well, you know the Kipax. We come up with all the all the witticisms. And it was an Isle Quinn to save our blushes, both in front of the net and the other net, and uh, in goal as well. And the game, there's 24,037 there. I'll, I'll read out some other scores and capacities later. So it doesn't sound a lot, but on the basis of other teams, it wasn't too bad. The teams that day for City, Colton started off, Hill, Poynton, Heath, Henry, Redmond, White, Brennan, Quinn, Harper and Ward. Yeah, Mr Ward got into a bit of trouble as well in this game. The subs were Reed and Allen and the Derby team. Yeah, Taylor was in net. Shilton was supposed to be in net, but I think he tweaked a hamstring or pulled a hamstring. The old uh, legend, of course, Peter Shilton in the twilight of his career at that stage. Taylor, Sage, Pickering, G. Williams, Wright, Kavanagh, Mickle White, Saunders... Harford, Wilson and P. Williams. There you go. And the headlines on a City 2-1 win. It's cut off. Angry Tone is in bust up with the ref. City salute Quinn's feet. Quinn pushes Derby under and gloves off for Colton. Tony faces an FA rap. It's not the greatest selection of puns on it, as far as headlines are concerned. But we'll go over to Bill Mills, a, a well-known newspaper journalist of the day, for his, his match report. 
on Manchester City 2, Derby County 1. Yeah, City keeper Tony Colton will be reported to the FA after throwing his gloves at referee Kenneth Lupton. He faces a three-match ban for being sent off for a professional foul on Derby ace Dean Saunders and will miss the Manchester Derby in a fortnight. Yeah, a little bit on that later. Colton distressed at the red car, ripped off his gloves and hurled them. And later the official confirmed the incident will be reported that I'm, as far as I'm concerned, he aimed them at me and I will be putting that in the report. Yes, it must have done you some serious damage a pair of goalkeepers his gloves mate City boss Peter he said the gloves were thrown towards Niall Quinn who probably dropped him uh, who took over from Colton in goal it's a complete uh, vol- volcanic afternoon for City Mark Ward showed his fury at being substituted by storming off the pitch and kicking the trainer's bucket accidentally sending the water over a police chief Looking to slide not to be behind bars. Standing Quinn had an amazing day. A lot lots happening at Main Road in those days, even when things weren't that exciting. He he doomed Derby to the second division with his best show of the sensational season. First, the city giant belted a 22nd minute volley past Peter Shilton standing Martin Taylor. And then when he pulled on the green jersey, he hurled himself to pa- hurled. Well, I'll talk about that later. Uh, to palm away sort of spot kick in the 34th minute. Quinn surrounded by 100 Irish. Irish fans who had flown over said it wasn't pre-planned that I should it was this while the game was going on I'm not too sure uh, no one else wanted to do it so I thought I would in training Quinn pays a tenner to teammates if they can score three out of five penalties against him after this performance it's easy to understand why the big Irishman doesn't pay out that often that's all he says uh, he was cool and collected while others lost their heads in the red card controversy and just to rub it in the corner which resulted from his penalty was saved with the air of a man who has played in goal all his life yeah I didn't reckon have a lot to do uh, from that moment you know there was no hope for Derby quite the opposite it was death on the nail oh please please uh, Bill and when David White finished them off there was nothing left for manager Arthur Cox to do but accept that his team's first division life is over for the time being. The man who has taken the club from the third to the first division will never get the response on the field he had demanded. There was little hope throughout of his players repairing the damage of a disastrous run, which has seen them go without a victory for 19 games. Only Mick Harford gave them a flicker of hope when he stooped to head home Matt Patterson's cross to leave Quinn Beaton on the first real test of his new year. He couldn't keep a clean sheet just in that last minute Derby got a goal back. Anyway, thanks, Bill. Uh, Reed's ver- Peter Reed's verdict on the game. What more can you say about Niall Quinn? He scores a great goal at one end and saves a penalty at the other. He even wins bets by saving penalties in training sessions. When he had to go in to face a penalty, I thought he might save it, but then I told myself not to be so silly. We lost our composure for a few minutes after that, but overall... I thought it was a disciplined performance from our side. And the player ratings, the form guide on the day in the Manchester Evening News. Colton got 4 out of 10. Shocking. Hill got an 8 point and 7. Heath 6. Hendrick, Redmond, White and Brennan all got 7. And 9 for Niall Quinn. Should have given, could have given him a 10. Come on. I mean, I know, I know he let a goal in at the end. That's a bit mean. Harper 7. Ward 5. And the subs read came on, of course. Uh, player, player manager at the time. Uh, he got a six. The referee was a Ken Lupton from Stockton. He got a seven out of ten. They're always kind on the refs in these scores. I've noticed over the years when I've been looking back at my sort of scraps book from the early 90s. Man of the match. Obvious, isn't it? Niall Quinn was a hero with a goal and penalty save. That is surely a record book statistic. Yeah, before we just finish off, yeah, just looking at some results that day elsewhere. Aston Villa 1, Wimbledon 2, in front of a crowd of 17,001. Crystal Palace 0, Everton 0, in front of 16,439. The biggest crowd of the day was at Anfield, Liverpool 3, Norwich 0, 37,065. Luton 1, Sunderland 2, in front of 11,157. Notts Forest 7, Chelsea 0. That's 7, Chelsea 0. Attendance 20,305. Sheffield United 2, Tottenham 2, which was the second highest crowd of the day, 25,706. And Southampton 2, Coventry 1, in front of 15,461. And City's crowd 24. 37, 24,037 was the third highest. So, as I said, it didn't sound that impressive, did it, in itself, 24,037. But based on some of those other crowds, it, it, it wasn't bad. It was a funny time. It was a funny time for going watching football. People weren't actually flocking to the product, in all fairness.
So what a match, yes, Niall Quinn, what a play. A shame we didn't keep that clean sheet, but what a stunning performance, scoring, and then literally minutes later saving a, a Dean Saunders penalty. Uh, I, was, I was always told he was a City fan. I don't, I don't know if that's confirmed. Let me know, guys, if you know. But some people used to say to me that he was a Welsh City fan. I have no idea what I altered if he ever was. I think that had just been a load of garbage. But, yeah, it was an interesting penalty save. He, Yes, as a striker, um, I don't know, as a, as a keeper, a lot, a lot of strikers like to, to side-foot it to a keeper's left. That's just part and parcel of, of how you've done. Certainly in those days as well, I used to play a lot of football myself. I used to save a lot of penalties, literally just diving to my left. And, uh, and I used to face, you know, I used to save hell of a lot because uh, that was the statistics and it was as simple as that. Nothing clever about it. That's just how it was. And now Quinn just decided to go left, which was Par for the course, and Mr. Dean Saunders just put it that way. And uh, yeah, I mean, actually, the dive, I just remember him sort of going down in stages. He's a big lad, obviously, like a giant redwood being fell by a lumberjack. He just sort of, so it wasn't a smooth dive. I just, I just sort of remember going down in stages. I'm sure it was a plat lane, then, and I was in the Kipax that day. And I think he put it out for a corner, so it's a bit disgruntled because he should have held on to it. But uh, yeah, so uh, <laughs> but and I think the thing said there about him coming for the corner. But in all fairness, apart from the goal at the end, I, I don't think Derby had, had anything had anything at all. Even though they had extra man, they were they were very poor. They were still playing four at the back, and City just had once Quinn went in goal, City just had one striker up front, and yet Derby was still playing four at the back. So, you know, when you're almost down, what's the point? Hey, but there you go. Mr. Cox lasted a little bit longer anyway. So the aftermath, yeah. So mathematically now Derby were down. No knee-jerk reactions. Hey, Arthur Cox had took them from the third division up to the first. So he did last another two years and a bit. So that wasn't too bad. And the win moved us, yeah, moved us up to the heady heights of fourth. But as stated, yes, the report in that report, Colton's idiocy, he did manage to play the next game, it was quite an important game as well, which will feature on another another episode of something, not in good hands, but something else about hat tricks. Uh, yeah, the game against he did play the game at Aston Villa in the next the next game at Villa Park. But then in the derby, we had to stick old Margotson in there. Um <laughs> a couple of games later. I was at that one, I was in amongst United fans in that game at Old Trafford and I, I must admit from memory as I say I'd love to go back and re-watch the whole thing but I, I sort of witnessed one of the worst goalkeeping performances by both goalies actually I think United's goalie was a, was, was a young lad at the time I can't remember his name escapes me but uh, it'll be in this scrapbook here somewhere but I think both goalkeepers were awful and I thought Matt, Matt, one of the worst performances by uh, goalkeepers are certainly the worst performance by a City goalkeeper I've ever seen. Let's let's face it, I've watched, I've watched Keith McRae, so that props that says a lot, doesn't it? But uh, there you go, yeah, Colt, so Colton. We did lose. We only lost one nil, but uh, yeah, uh, Colton did perhaps add to the facts of being an idiot in that game. Uh, cost us perhaps a derby chance as well because we did finish above United that season. And by the end of the season. As well as Derby, if you if you remember, you'll probably remember the the Sunderland guy is coming down for the last game of the season. Lots of uh, quotes about fifteen thousand. I think there was near a ten myself, but uh, yeah, they were a bit over the top on estimations. I thought, but uh, yeah, that was a we did actually send them down as well. So as well as confirming Derby's relegation, we also sent uh, confirmed Sunderland's relegation on the last day of the same season. And we would manage to finish fifth, which wasn't bad. Only 21 points behind Champions Arsenal. So there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed that uh, little uh, little bit. You need hands feature today with Mr. Niall Quinn against Derby County on Saturday the 20th of April, 1991. Yeah, so were you there? Were you there? Did you see me? <laughs> I had a, uh, yeah, I had, a, I had some air then. I did have air then, just about. But uh, let me know your memories. Any memories you've got of it, guys? But as I say, did you have the same feeling that I did about Niall Quinn going down his stages to save it? It was uh, quite funny. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that, please. Until we meet again, stay safe, Blues. And I got through it without sweating too much and I'm roasting it. But, uh, but the next one I do, uh, I've got another one to do today, so it'll be hot. I'm sure by a couple of days it'll be back down to normal temperatures again and I'll, I'll, have a, I'll probably have a woolly coat on, a woolly top on or something like that. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Please, until the next time, stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Bye for now. <laughs>